So let's start with what is XPath. XPath stands for XML Path Language and is a language used to query XML data. It's made up of a path-like syntax similar to that that is found in operating system directory structures. Queries in XPath are called expressions. Expressions can be simple, such as this example, which pulls all of the first names from an XML file containing employee data, or something a bit more complex, like this example, which pulls that same data but prepends a bit of text in front of it. In addition to XPath, you can query XML data using XQuery. XQuery is a language that is capable of both querying and transforming XML data. XQuery is actually a superset of XPath, and this means that all XPath expressions also work within XQuery. In addition to querying, XQuery is also capable of handling on-the-fly manipulations and construction of XML documents, which can allow for some very powerful expressions to be written. The heart of XQuery is a flower statement. A flower statement consists of a number of clauses that behave similarly to what you might see in SQL. These clauses are for, let, where, order, and result. Having established that XQuery is very similar to SQL, I thought it would be useful to set up a number of demonstrations depicting a SQL query and the equivalent XPath and XQuery expressions. The following queries pull against a database and XML file that consists of a fairly basic schema containing make, model, year, and other information pertaining to automobiles. This schema was originally a SQL database built as a demonstration in Altova's Mobile Together application. It was exported with Database Spy to an XML format, loaded into XML Spy, and modified slightly to make querying and readability easier. Using Altova's XML Spy application, we are able to write and debug XPath and XQuery expressions on the fly and see our results immediately. The first expression I'd like to demonstrate shows how we would pull all of the data available to us in our car's data set. In SQL, this is accomplished with a basic select star from query. The syntax in XPath is equally simple, only requiring us to specify a path to the cars node and then returning all nodes below it. Building this query in XQuery requires us to use the for and return clauses from our flower statement. It's worth noting that this is actually valid syntax within XPath as well. The second example builds on the idea of pulling a block of data, but limits the amount of data received to only the values in the model field. To perform this in SQL, we would change our select clause to pull only the model column. XPath syntax remains simple, requiring us to only add an additional node, model, to our expression. Similarly, XQuery requires us to add the model node as well to the return clause in our expression. As you can see, the result set returned to us a number of duplicates. We can resolve this by modifying our expressions to look for only distinct values. Within SQL, we would add a distinct keyword to the select portion of our query. Similar functionality exists within XPath using the distinct values function. Because XQuery is a superset of XPath, we can also apply this same function to the results of our flower expression. Functions within XPath and XQuery can be nested. To demonstrate this, we will sort our results alphabetically. Within SQL, this is accomplished using the order by clause. XPath is able to sort values using the sort function. And this is where XQuery's syntax begins to deviate a bit. We could certainly use the sort function on our result set, but if you remember, the flower statement contains an order by clause, which, similar to SQL, will handle ordering our results. This example also introduces the idea of an interim variable which can reduce complexity and improve readability of your expressions. Pulling all of the values is well and good, but what we really need is the ability to filter and search. Building on our previous example, filtering within SQL is as easy as adding a WHERE clause and conditionals. Within XPath, filtering is applied a bit differently. We tell XML Spy that we want to go to the car node and return all models, but only where BMW is the manufacturer. This is denoted by stating manufacturer equals BMW within brackets in the car node. The syntax for performing the same query in XQuery is a bit more SQL-like. We could filter in the for clause using something that looks like the XPath expression above, or we could utilize the where clause within our flower statement to filter where the manufacturer is BMW. 
Like any other good query language, XPath and XQuery will allow you to chain conditionals together. In SQL, this is accomplished with additional conditionals added to the WHERE clause. The XPath syntax is quite similar. We will add our year boundaries to the conditional portion of the expression. XQuery begins to look a little bit different. We will set an interim value to the year we want to query against in the let clause, and then we will add this conditional to our where clause, comparing against that interim value. The interim variable is not required, but included in this example for readability purposes. In addition to ranges and exact values, it will often be necessary to compare against a list of values. In this example, our expression will be modified to also include cars manufactured by Porsche. In SQL, this is accomplished by changing your manufacturer conditional in the WHERE clause to an IN and including your additional values. Within XPath, the IN is implied when you are making a comparison. All we need to do is change the conditional that looks for just BMW and change this to look for a list that contains both BMW and Porsche. Once again, because XQuery is a superset of XPath, we can make a similar adjustment to our XQuery expression and compare the manufacturer value with the list of manufacturers we want to filter on. Our final example performs a task that is a fair bit more complicated. In this example, we will join in a second data set, filter our results based on the previous examples, and then concatenate the information together to make a string. In SQL, this is done using a join statement with the concatenation handled in a select statement the syntax of which will vary based on the flavor of SQL you are using. XPath can accomplish this, but the expression required is not terribly easy to read or understand quickly. XQuery, however, only requires us to add another line to our FOR clause with the actual join happening in the WHERE clause. We can then concatenate our message using double pipes in the RETURN clause. Those who have a strong understanding of SQL should find XQuery intuitive and easy to pick up. All of the examples and source data shown in this video are available in a link in the description below. The XPath and XQuery expressions can be run using Altova XML Spy and the SQL queries can be run using Altova Database Spy. Both of these products are available with a free, fully functional 30-day trial at altova.com.